Amen. Good morning to y'all. Welcome to High Ground Christian Church. I'm Pastor James Ziegler. I appreciate you coming in this morning and getting the word from God. Listen, our vision statement is Colossians 3, 1 and 2. It says, if then you have been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things on this earth. Listen, I, I strongly believe in that. I think if we focus more on God and, and on the things he has for us, then we won't have to worry about people and what they think and, and how we're thinking about how they think about us. Amen. So listen, let me pray for you real quick, and then I'm going to go straight into the sermon. I'm not going to hold you long today. Lord, thank you, first of all, for waking us up this morning. Some of us woke up this morning and just forgot to tell you. It wasn't that you wasn't on our mind. We thank you for what you've done, but we want to tell you corporately that we love you and we appreciate you and we glorify you for every single thing that you've done for us in our life, the good and the bad, God. It always made us strong and made us better, and we appreciate it, God. So keep covering over our homes. Keep covering over our children. Keep covering over our lives, God, our finances, God, our, our, our spiritual walk, God. We, we love you. We praise you and we glorify you and we thank you today. So, God, I'm asking that you breathe the fresh air on this sermon that you have uh, prepared for your people, God, so that we will receive, we will change, and we live for you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all ready for a sermon? Listen, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit's been speaking to me, and, and I got confirmation from him early in the week what I should preach on. And it's coming from Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 13. And I hope you have your Bible. If not, listen to me good. I trust what I'm telling you. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 13. I'm, I'm coming from the King James Version, and this is what it says. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Today, I want to talk about and just tell you, protect yourself. I want, this is the title of my sermon, Protect Yourself. Well, preacher, what are you talking about? Today, my sermon is real simple. It's the same thing I learned when I was little and, and, and other people wanted to fight me and, and, or, or go against me. But, but my mama and my, my daddy, my brother, my cousins, my sister, and everybody else in my family that know how to fight, they, they would just tell you this, protect yourself. Yeah, you may be quick and, and you may be able to throw a punch, but if you don't know how to weave and bob, then most likely you're going to get hit. Now, 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 this just simply means that whenever someone was going to come at you to fight you, you should have your guard. So this is what we're talking about. I'm telling you to protect yourself this way. If if they throw a punch, you would already be ready to block it because you got your guards up. And yes. You may get hit every now and then, but for the most part, I always like to say this. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. You can't try to get ready putting your hands up like that. And, and, and I've seen boxers do it. You know, Muhammad Ali was good at it. Uh, 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 but Floyd Mayweather is good at wop and bobbing and weaving and, and, and sticking and, and hit. Listen, that's great. And although my, my sermon is called Protect Yourself, and, and, and I believe in this term that I just told you about, about protecting yourself, I'm not referring to that today. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Well, here it is. In the spiritual aspect of your life, where Satan is coming at you with every punch and, and kick and fiery dart he can find to hurt you, He's not trying to show you any leniency, any mercy. He wants to expose all of your weaknesses. But will you have the, your guards up when he comes? Will you be able to protect yourself when he comes? Now, listen, I'm urging you today to put on the whole armor of God so you will always be ready when the enemy comes. And just for the record, I want to let you know this. He's coming. I don't want you to think that you're no special than anybody else. 
He comes in my life. He comes in your life. He comes in everybody's life. And, and it's all about if we have our guards up, if we're ready and prepared for what he's coming, especially for those who are trying to live right. He does not see the significance of living and serving for God. And so nowadays, people are growing up. And, and, and not even teaching it to their kids. The kids don't know anything about God. They don't know anything about Jesus because we're not teaching them to have the whole armor of God. So things come at them and they don't know who to call on. So he does not care about how you are trying to do better in your life. He wants you to be angry. He wants you to be stressed and depressed and sad and, and anxious and, and unhealthy in your body. And, and most of all, he wants you to be ignorant of God's word. But but I want to talk to you and, and explain to you the steps of protecting yourself from this spiritual wickedness and, and the darkness where they have rulers in high places. And although the Bible states that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, listen, it, it is flesh nowadays, flesh and blood that Satan uses to steal and kill us. My aim today is to stop Satan from using you. To be one of those people he can use to hurt others. And, and most importantly, he wants to try to hurt God. That's his whole aim. He ain't really even, he don't care nothing about you. It's all about trying to hurt God. And he tries to come through us sometimes about what we say and how we treat people and what we do and show ignorance. But I'm telling you today, I'm about to teach you how to protect yourself. When you put on the whole armor of God, we are able to fight off Satan's demons. He got angels. He got imps. And now in this day and time, there are a lot of humans like you and I, flesh and blood, who desire to be used by him. So, so now we have to arm ourselves spiritually against them too and try to remove that. So, so here it is. I have a few things. I want you to write them down. Uh, their number. And number one, I want to teach you about your loins girt about with truth. And, and they call this the belt of truth. This is the first thing in, 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 in uh, putting on the whole armor of God is the belt of truth. In Ephesians chapter 6 and 14, it says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Now, this would be like... Um, Wearing a belt around your waist so that it holds up your pants or your britches or or or, or, or tighten a belt around your waist to secure whatever clothing you have on. If it's a long dress or if it's a long piece of cloth. Well, this is how we should wear God's truth on us. We should have it tight and all around us and it holds us up. This means that we are going to have to read his word more. M more often. So people won't be able to just tell us anything about the Bible and we believe them because we don't study enough to know what the truth is. I urge you to get a friend or, or someone who loves the Lord like you do to help study the word of God. If, if you don't go to Bible study, if you don't want to be around a lot of people because you don't really understand. And, and, and when you and your friend are, are confused and you don't have what you need uh, about something you go ask a, a, a man or a woman of God who preaches the word of God to help you interpret what is being said in the word. We must know God's truth in order. Listen, as a matter of fact, Isaiah 59 and 15. Look at this one uh, in, in the uh, NIV. It says truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil, if you shun evil, you become prey. The Lord looked in and was displeased that there was no justice. Wasn't nobody there. Stand up for people like us who shun evil and, and looking for the truth. So I, I'm just telling you, put on the belt of truth. That's number one. You can write that down. Number two, the Bible talks about breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. That's Ephesians 6 and 14. It says, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. This would be like having on an armored suit uh, or a bulletproof vest because you want to protect all the organs inside your body if someone tried to do harm to you in your chest area. This will protect your heart. It'll protect your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your stomach, and all the important organs inside that helps your body run. Well, 
when you relate this to the spirit, then we have to protect our lives by being righteous. The breastplate of righteousness, living a righteous life means to engage in the scripture and live by the word of God. This requires that you spend time with God for yourself. Listen, when you have a personal relationship with God, this means you must speak to him and listen to him on your own time. This doesn't mean just when you're at church or, or when the pastor is preaching, when the preacher preaches or, or on a prayer line or, or, or with some friends. But this means spending time with him and him alone. See, we can get lost in the shuffle when we we're in the middle of church. We can sit in the back or uh, act like uh, nobody can see us or whatever. But God is still looking or when you went on the prayer line, you cannot say anything, get quiet. Or, or when, when you're around friends, you can let them lead the way the whole time. But I'm telling you, you have to have a personal relationship with God. You got to speak to him and, and listen to him on your own time. This doesn't mean just that church. Just don't mean just with your friends in that church. This means spending time with him alone. Nobody will stand with you when you stand before the judgment seat except for Jesus. <laughs> He's going to speak on your behalf, but it's going to be you by yourself. And your life has to show some righteousness somewhere throughout your life. Somewhere along the way, you protected your spirit inside of you. With the breastplate of righteousness. Your spirit has to be protected when you walk in righteousness. So please, you know, start now. Put it on the breastplate of righteousness so you will be protected throughout your life. So that's number one. And number one, the belt of truth. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. And, and let me tell you, I was reading Isaiah chapter 59. And this is also in IV 16 through 17. It says, and he saw that there was no man and wondered. That there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm, whose arm? God's arm, brought salvation unto him and his righteousness. It sustained him. Who? It sustained us. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. Listen, I, I, I'm telling you, th this came in Isaiah 59, 15. Truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. And he saw that there was no ban and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness. It sustained him for he put on righteousness as a breastplate. And I'm asking you to do the same. Put on the breastplate of righteousness amen the belt of truth uh, the breastplate of righteousness number three this is feet fitted for the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace that's ephesians chapter 6 and 15 niv feet that are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace now now how, how do i explain this this would be like putting on shoes to go outside so you don't step on any glass or, or some rocks uh, uh, and cut your feet or, or you don't step in any gum or, or any dog poop. Uh, shoes protect our feet from harsh environments that we walk on every day. I don't want to walk outside on the hot ground with no shoes on. Or, or, or we only want to go out in the snow or in the rain with, without no shoes on. Some kids like to go play in the rain, but they... They find out quickly that it'll get them sick. Listen, so we we put on shoes to protect our feet. So the same thing applies in the spiritual sense. We must protect ourselves and be ready for the gospel of peace. We have to be careful about where we walk. And wherever the gospel leads us, we must be prepared to go in peace. We first must know that the gospel, what it says, and, and, and not only know what it says, but we have to believe it for ourselves before we try to go preach it to somebody else. As a matter of fact, I had a friend, he called me the other day, and he was telling me about another friend. He, he was just tell, asking me what I thought. He was like, hey, man, I was talking about a friend the other day, and he said he stopped going to church. I said, oh, yeah, why? But he didn't like the preacher. He didn't like the music. No, he said he doesn't believe a lot of the stuff in the Bible, some of the characters in the Bible, he just didn't believe in. He like he he black and he, and he think that 
you know, white people changed up the Bible to, to fit them. And, you know, it, it hurt me and it saddened me because we, we as people, black people, we, we will elevate our ethnicity and our blackness over the word of God and try to make it a white thing. Listen, the Bible is not a black or white thing. It's, it's either a righteous thing that we're all going to get together and put on the whole armor of God and believe in who he is. It's a salvation thing. And, and it's free to everybody. Not just black people, not just white people. We first got to know what the gospel says and believe it for ourselves. And when we speak to other people concerning the gospel, we should have a pleasant speech and speak to them in a peaceful way where they can receive the gospel that we are talking about. The only reason I bring this up because there are a lot of people in church with nasty attitudes. A lot of people around the world just with nasty attitudes. But it's hard because we, the, the people that are in church, are trying to save, get other people saved. But we go to them with such a nasty attitude and we downplay on people. They know the word. These people with the nasty attitudes, the word of God. And they believe the word of God, but they can't spread the word of God because they don't have a peaceful disposition about themselves for other people to receive. Even even if, if people are coming to you in a harsh way and, and looking for an argument, we still must maintain our peace. I, I had to learn that. I can't get frustrated and flustered every time other people get upset and get mad. I have to maintain my peace. We have to realize that the gospel will not be accepted everywhere. It won't be accepted everywhere we go, but we have to maintain who Jesus is to us and remember what his word says. Let, let, let me tell you what his word says. You remember in Matthew chapter 10, 12 to 14, this is the NIV. It says, as you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, leave that home or town and shake the dust off your feet. Listen, I'm telling you to protect your feet with the peace that God gives you. You don't have to leave your peace with people that don't care to have peace with you. So take your peace and walk away. You don't need to have no dusty argument and, and get into no uh, no fight with them and, and your feet be all dusty that came from other people. Shake the dust off and get back into the word of God. I'm telling you to protect yourself. Listen, I, I have to learn this. I, this is the other thing I've learned is that things are going to change in life. Things will all not always be the same. And I learned not to get all flustered and upset because things change and, and people come and go. Listen, you 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 bid them peace. You bid them farewell. And, and if that's the case, shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. You have to protect yourself. You first have to put on the belt of truth. You first, and second thing, you got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. And then you have to have your feet fitted for the readiness of the gospel of peace. And the only way you can do that is if you're in the right mindset and you have peace and you have love and you have joy so that people can receive it from you. But you got to know the word of God. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay on that. You have to know the word of God. You can't speak the word of God if you don't know it and don't actually believe it. All right. All right. Let me move on. Number four. Number four. Take up the shield of faith. That's in Ephesians chapter 6 and 16. I'm coming out from the NIV version. It says, in addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Let me tell you. So, so the shield is is a, a most of y'all know it's a piece of metal uh, that is used in, in in a time of a battle. You know, you see it in all, all the superheroes they be having them. You you can strap it, strap the shield on, on one of your arms to protect you from some kind of blow to your body. It, it could protect you from a sword or or a knife or or, or a bullet or in a fiery arrow or a dart. It would defend you when 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 harm is coming your way. Same thing with with your spiritual sense. In the spiritual sense, when the devil is shooting his fiery darts at you, the shield of faith will protect you. Now, listen to me good. The shield of faith 
when Satan is trying to tempt you with all the worldly things you like, then the shield of faith is going to protect you. When, when doubt creeps in your mind and you feel like giving up, then the shield of faith is going to protect you. And, 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 and for those of, uh, of us who are believers and, and live in the spiritual world of faith, then God is that shield for us. He is the shield that we need. We just have to have the faith that he will never leave us or forsake us in the time of a battle. He's not going to take you to it and not get you through it. He is the shield, but we must have the faith. Just, just like in, in, in the 23rd number of Psalms, uh, uh, the verse 4, it says, Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why is that? For thou art with me. Th thy rod and, and thy staff, they comfort me. So, so why would we lose faith when we have so much protection all around us? The shield is not going to let anything penetrate through our, our, our shield to get to our bodies. If we keep the shield of faith strapped to our bodies, we will always make it through. We, we got to realize that. That that, that that rod that the Lord has is going to beat off every single thing that tries to come at you. I don't care how the wolf tries to come in sheep clothing. I don't care how the fiery darts come. He can block all that. And and, it's, and the staff is going to comfort you. They comfort you. They're going to get you through it. So so what was number one? The, the, the belt of, of truth. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness. Number three, feet that are fitted for readiness of the gospel of peace. And, and number four, take up the shield of faith. Now I want to move to number five. And, and this is some more armor that you have to have on, putting on the whole armor of God. Protect yourself. The helmet of salvation is number five. That's Ephesians 6 and 17. It says, take the helmet of salvation. The helmet is made to protect the head. And, and, and the faith from, from weapons that can cause damage to the brain. Helmets have always been worn in the midst of battles. Helmets are still required to be worn by soldiers today because this particular item is still very important. And although they are made differently now and have better technology, the helmet is still a very essential item for protection for your head. Now, now in the spiritual world, the helmet of salvation means that our minds are protected by the word of God because we have insulated our heads with the salvation of Christ. Listen, all we think about is, is who Jesus is to us and how he died for us and, and how he loves us and how God loves us. Listen, that's what helmet I have on. My head is insulated with the salvation of Christ. The helmet of salvation. We have allowed the helmet to block out the desires of this world. When you wear your helmet of salvation, it blocks out the desires of this world and, 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 and the traps that Satan sets for us. It will move all that out of the way because we're focused. One of the biggest battles that you will fight in your life is in your own head. And if you don't have on the helmet of salvation, you can go crazy. Because because you're not putting on, on the helmet of salvation and you don't have on the armor for God. And so the fight that you're having is really with yourself and what you think. We have to fight against the warfare of our minds and, and put on the helmet of salvation uh, on to keep us from, from the concentration of sin. And I always talk about have a sober mindset. This will help. If you have on the helmet of salvation, you will have a sober mindset. And, and you put that helmet on, it'll keep you from concentrating about sin. That's why I always talk about Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If then you've been raised with Christ and seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above and not on the things on this earth. If we are able to keep on the helmet of salvation, then we can block out the distraction of this world and focus on Jesus. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Focus on Jesus. This will keep us out of so much trouble. If we just keep our helmets on, I, I'm almost through now. I, I'm almost through. I got one more. Got one more. Number six, 
the sword of the spirit the sword of the spirit this is in ephesians 6 and 17 as well it started off it says take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god well listen here it is i i, I was asking you about the word of god and and, and and if you have it now now the the sword is usually used when you are going on the attack or having to defend yourself you know you see people with the swords and most soldiers that use swords had to practice with the sword in every movie you see them practicing first on dummies and stuff to see how it works and and they have to practice and practice with the sword because the swords could be too big or, or they could be too heavy they may not even have been sharpened enough to penetrate through anything penetrate through anything so you had to make sure that it was up to par to be used in battle. I'm, I'm going to take my sword, practice with it, and I'm going to shine it up. I'm going I'm, to I'm, I'm sharpen it up. Make sure that when I go in battle, it will do some justice for me. You didn't want to go into battle with a, with a dull, heavy sword that you can't handle or fight with. No, no. Your sword has to be something you, you're able to carry. Something you're able to use, and it must be sharp. Because only iron can sharpen iron. You can't try to sharpen your sword on a tree branch. No, no, that's not going to do it. So in, in this spiritual battle, your sword is the word of God. I know it's a lot of us don't read it enough. And I, I tell people, if you just read a couple of scriptures a day, open up your Bible and just read, read a couple of scriptures a day. I, I, I don't need you to be a genius, but you need to read it for yourself. Here's the sword. There's nothing for you to fight with when you don't have it. When you don't read it and you don't know it. But the only way that you are going to be able to sharpen this sword is if you read and know the word of God. The reason some of us lose so many battles is because we don't carry our swords anymore. I never forget when I was younger, you know, they had us, you know, they would give our Bibles to the kids and we'd take the, the Bibles to church and, and they'd have, they teach us the, the Bibles and, and go through the Bibles. That's how I learned Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings. They, they taught us that because they wanted us to know what was in the Word of God, where to find what we needed. They don't do that anymore, and nobody understands. They don't carry the sword anymore, even if it was carried in your hearts. But we don't read enough, and we don't know it enough to try to understand the word of God to even have it in here. But here it is. Here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching it so you can have it. The battles that we face could be won if we simply applied the word of God to our lives. If we, if we just applied the word of God to our lives, Things will come out a whole lot different. There are many of us that are going into this spiritual battle, but we're missing one or, or more of, of these essential items and expect to come out with, with no bruises. No, no, no. Listen, every single thing that I mentioned here had to do with the word of God. When you break it all down, when, when I talk, of, talk about the belt of truth, Listen, God wants you to know the truth and he wants you to know his word, which is the truth. When I talk about number two, the breastplate of righteousness. Listen, if you're going to be righteous, you got to know the right things to, to know about God and, and what the Bible says and protect yourself when you have the breastplate of righteousness. So listen, when I talk about feet that are fitted for the readiness of the gospel peace, if you know the word of God, listen, you will never argue with people in a way that displeases God and not get his word to go and move forward. It's the gospel of peace. If you take up the shield of faith, listen, the word of God said that we must have faith to please him. And listen, if we don't have the faith and if we don't know this about the word of God, how can you have faith if you don't know the word of God? Listen, the helmet of salvation. Getting your mind together, knowing that Jesus died for us and his salvation, we should hold that dear to us so that we don't get lost in, in, in the shuffle in this world with all these spiritual things uh, and all these spiritual people that are in dark places and, 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 and while we're wrestling and, and, and not just against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness. 
in spiritualness in, in high places if we don't put on this whole armor of God. And, and, and this is what we got to do when we have our feet fitted. And then we need to take up the shield of faith. We got to know how to block these things out. And the only thing to do is to protect it. When you have your spirit, it's always going to be a fight between your spirit and, 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 and your flesh. Your spirit and your flesh Your flesh is telling you to do one thing And your spirit is telling you, hey, stay calm You don't need to go there you, you, you Don't do not do that your, your flesh is saying, no, 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 focus on this Listen, focus on the sex Focus on the drug, focus on stealing Focus on the homosexuality Focus on uh, uh, what we're doing, adultery Fornication, focus on these things And the spirit is saying, no Take up the shield of faith and block These fiery darts that Satan is trying to send at you Put on the helmet of salvation. Put it, put it on. You got to have your mind right. Put it on. The sword of the spirit. You got to know how to fight. And the only way you're going to know how to fight is if you read it. Pick up your sword. Pick it up. I, I, I want you. You can't go into this battle and think you're coming out without any bruises if you don't have your sword. You don't have all the equipment you need. How do you expect to win? You are not protecting yourself. When you have on the whole arm of God, Satan is swinging, but he can't ever hit you. <laughs> he keeps shooting darts, but they keep missing you. And, and, and then some of them are just hitting the shield and blocking off. He tried to hit you over the head with some foolishness and, and, and make you upset and make you fluster and be mad about what's going on in life. But the helmet of salvation is blocking those blows because you won't let nothing. A nobody turned you from God. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care if it's in your home. I don't care if it's on your job. I don't care if you're walking down the street. I don't care if it's in the store. We have our sword in our hands. And Satan is actually scared to attack you because he knows that you are more powerful than he is when you know the word of God. And this is why how he's getting us. He's trying to move us away from this. He's trying to move us away from the old church ways uh, of uh, studying the word of God, teaching the word of God, loving the word of God, understanding the word of God, and living by the word of God. But he, he's nervous, though, when you start knowing this. He can't attack you. And, and, and he knows that you're not going to stray away from it. And what you believe, he has to be careful. And I'm telling you, be careful. Protect yourself. Keep your guards up at all times. Keep your bob and weave. Yeah, he's going to hit you sometimes. I, I can't lie to you. Satan is so crafty when he has so many different schemes. You know, you, you may think, oh, well, alcohol ain't my thing. This ain't what I do. But but you may be on uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, prescription that the doctors gave you. And now you hooked on old prescription drugs. No, no. Listen, listen, we got to protect ourselves. That's all I'm telling you. Whatever it may be, whatever, it may not be your, be your vice today. You know, it, this may not be your thing, but you got this other thing. Listen, we got to fight against it all. I'm asking you to be prepared at all times for the battle and put on the whole armor of God and protect yourself. The Bible says the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. But if you're going to be on the battlefield, you, go, you get better put on the whole armor of God and protect yourself. Just know what you have. Watch out for these people. Watch out for Satan. He's after us in this day and time. And we got to protect ourselves. You got to put on the whole arm of God. And, and this is why Ephesians 6, 10 to 13 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The, the devil is a wild boy. He's crazy. The wiles of the devil will get you in some a hellish situation. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And these people in high places are starting to put in laws and, 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 and they're passing laws that allow sin to be free. Wherever you, where, wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Listen, the reason we preach these sermons is Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, guess what? Thou shalt be saved. Now, when you get saved, there's more work to do. I'm just telling you because he's going to come at you. 
Uh, I, I, he may come at, at me tomorrow just for telling you what I'm telling you, the sword, but you got to have it. You got to have it in your heart. You got to have it in your mind. You got to have it in your mouth. You got to live it. You got to have it in here and, and love God enough. Listen, if you want to be a blessing to the church, you can give to our cash app. It's uh, money sign higher ground CC. Uh, be a blessing. And, and listen, even if you don't put it in our church, I'm telling you, pay your tithe, be a blessing to some church. Because God's going to bless you. The Bible says he'll open up the window and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. Now, and this is all because I know the word of God. And when you know the word of God and you believe what the word of God says, then you don't have a problem doing some of the things that, that it's asking. This is not something that's personally from, from me. I just know it because I, I do it. And, and he continues to bless me. So I love you. I appreciate you taking the time. And, and hopefully my music came through. If it didn't, make sure you chat me and let me know. Let's pray real quick. Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your patience and your, your guidance, God. Thank you for, for teaching us about putting on the whole arm of God. Just like you taught it to me, God. Thank you for helping me to teach it to somebody else, God. That we need to stay protected from the wiles of the devil and, and these darknesses and, and these people in high places, these rulers, God. But help us to put on the whole armor of God and fight against these things. We love you. We we praise you. We glorify you. We thank you for your son. Jesus, thank you for standing on our behalf. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for loving us. Holy Spirit, thank you for being a comforter for us and, and leading us in the right direction. Help us through these hard times, God. Thank you for all that you've done. We love you and we praise you and we glorify you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Listen, y'all have a great day. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I, I'm going to be back on Tuesday preaching a little bit more about this and, and having a little bit Bible study. I love you. God bless you. And I'll talk to you later.